Joe's in for Alex tonight and he's got his shades on. That's a good sign. That absolutely is <laughs> a good sign, Kelsey. It is gorgeous out here. The sun is shining very bright and even if you burn pretty easily, you're actually going to need the sunscreen today. That is how perfect it has been. I wanted to show this graphic because Take a look at that dancing turkey. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what, I can't wait for the Thanksgiving food. Take a look at Saturday. Those are two perfect days there. Look at Joe making Valentine's Day dreams come true. I am true. here for all of you. <laughs> now taking a look at the golf forecast. Now this isn't a club, but the closest thing is a broom. We've got three great days to get out and hit the links. Those black lines of equal pressure, we're gonna be going from low pressure that brought us a little bit of light snow quickly to an Arctic high pressure. So you see they're a little bit closer together. That means those winds are going to be strong and that is not only going to be bringing us those cold temperatures, but it's also gonna bring those wind chills very far down to dangerous levels. And at those wind chills, bare skin, anything, you know, fingertips, ears, uh, mouth, really anything, 10 to 15 minutes and you can have frostbite. So dangerous wind chills tonight. And yeah, if you're celebrating the new year, make sure that it is indoors. Freezing rain, like I said, it's a little bit complicated. You can see that when we have a above freezing column of air just above the surface, when we are below freezing at the surface, what that means is that it's gonna fall as snow. First, obviously, upper parts of the atmosphere, change back over to rain in that warmer sector, and it's not gonna have enough time to change back over to snow or sleet when it makes its way to the surface. So anything at the surface that has a surface temperature of 32 degrees or below, it will fall as liquid, but once it hits that, it's going to freeze instantly. That is going to cause whiteout conditions and blizzard conditions. So uh, just be absolutely prepared because we're gonna see snow throughout the Sioux Empire tomorrow and uh, be prepared with those winds because that's gonna cause some slick road conditions, especially bridges and overpasses. And it's gonna cause visibilities to be down under a mile at times and even places in the winter weather advisories here we could still see whiteout conditions at times tomorrow with the snow falling and with uh, those winds being up towards 50 miles per hour. So there's a lot going on tomorrow and uh, it's it could get pretty crazy, especially tomorrow afternoon and into the afternoon commute hours. Got a bit of a breeze out there. Just a bit. Yeah. Hopefully everyone was able to hang on to <laughs> hats, bags, whatever they had in their hands today because it was a windy one. It definitely yeah. was. Crazy to think that we were uh, talking snow just a couple of weeks ago. It wasn't all that long ago and now it's past 10 o'clock and we are still dealing with temperatures in the upper 60s and even some mid 70s there across the Missouri River Valley. Those of us in Chamberlain, Winter and Valentine feeling pretty good tonight. And then those wind gusts are still very, very breezy. So if you for any reason are heading outside, be sure you're still hanging on tight because we've still got wind gusts ab above 30 miles per hour. Take a look at Mitchell at 39 winter. We're at 38 for a, mile, for a wind gust speed. Yeah, there it's breezy. It's going to be slowly calming down through the overnight hours, but we're still going to be dealing with slightly breezy conditions tomorrow. Clouds and radar, we do have some light rain possibly falling here towards Pier, but a few of these thunderstorms actually did go severe over towards Rapid City. We're not going to be seeing any thunderstorms in our western counties tonight, but we are going to be dealing with thunderstorms for tomorrow, which is the main story. So let's get to those lows for tonight. We're going to be in the mid to upper 50s. That warm air coming up with that low pressure system is going to be making that impact, and that's why we're going to stay so mild tonight. And highs tomorrow are going to be in the 80s as well across the east. So we are going to be very warm once again, but let's take a look at Futurecast and time out Monday a little bit. We're going to see some clearing across the southeast during the morning hours, which is going to be crucial in getting a little bit warmer. And also that's going to help initiate a few of those storms once we get into the evening. Now, once we get to it's between that 7 and 10 o'clock hour, that is going to be very crucial as far as when um, those storms initiate and what time they initiate. And that's going to affect how strong they are as well. So they initiate a little bit earlier around seven. We're going to see these be pretty strong and you know, we're going to have hail and damaging winds are going to be the main threats. As we head through here, you can see it becomes more of a line. So when this happens, that decreases the hail chance and that increases the chance that we're going to be dealing with severe winds past, uh, you know, 60 miles per hour possible with these storms. So uh, they are going to be somewhat short lived and they're going to move out. We're still going to be dealing with that little bit heavy rain across the southeast. 
and we are going to be dealing with storms into th Tuesday morning. But after that, we are going to dry out and we are going to see uh, just cloudy conditions for Tuesday again with that light rain ending in the morning. Now, one thing you need for severe thunderstorms is moisture and you can see Monday evening with dew points in the low 60s across southern and southeastern portions of South Dakota. That's good enough. That's plenty. And then the amount of energy and the yellows and reds here. That's plenty as well. So we've got a lot of parameters that are going to be in place for severe storms, and that is why we are in that slight risk. So make sure you have your severe weather plan in place. Now, as far as what our main threats are going to be, the flash flooding threat is low and the tornado threat is low, but hail up to two inches in diameter is possible. That is damaging hail and wind speeds up past 60 miles per hour with these storms is possible as well. So those are the main threats and we are going to be watching that very closely in the seven day forecast. You can see that we are going to have a multiple rain chances into this week, but they are looking fairly light. No more severe weather after tomorrow evening. So main focus is tomorrow evening and again, just have your severe weather plan in place if you are in that slight risk area. And keep your eyes on that weekend. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Joe.